Hello guys and welcome to this new video. This one is going to be a quick guide to a few macros that I created recently and that I'm going to share on Reactor. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, I have set up a little tracker here uh, because the first macro that I'm going to show you is called Tracker 2. And this macro is basically a reference transform to a tracker. So what you have to do is to basically drag and drop the tracker in this box here, and then you can do the operation that you want. So let's say that we want to stabilize the footage, and as you can see, we have the footage stabilized. Remember that the tracker that I have done is far from perfect, but you know, uh, it's just to showcase what this macro can do. And as you can see, we have some uh, sliders here, and with those, you can uh, dial in the amount of stabilization, for example. And of course, you can you can play with the edges. For example, you can mirror those, or you can I don't know, duplicate or warp them, whatever, as you would do with a transform node. You can select the filter method. You can flatten the transform, and you can also add the motion blur. But the best feature I think is gonna be the set reference frame, which is something that you don't have in the tracker node. So for example, let's say that we want to stabilize from here and that would set the reference frame at that frame and then that would be the new reference frame. And I can have as many tracker tools as I want and using the same data from the same tracker, I can have different reference frames. So instead, let's say that we want to match move something on that footage and let's add a checkerboard. All right, something like this. And again, we can even here select the reference frame. And as you can see, the checkerboard will be much moved to that to that specific ref reference frame. And as I was saying, we can select whatever reference frame and that will be staying bang on. All right, so let's move to the next one. And for the next one, I would need to copy this comp in here. And this one is a super quick and dirty screen replacement. And what I have done is what I would usually do, which is use Mocha Pro to have a great uh, planner track. And I would export a tracker node from Mocha. Yeah, I would use the, these in this way. For example, loading a checkboard as an example. And in the tracker node, I would have to go in here, corner positioning, and that bang would mean for me to having this input in the uh, tracker position that I have from Mocha. And that's all good. So, uh, but I have uh, created a macro for this operation that builds on top of the tracker node again, which is called tracker pin tool. And it does this, sorry, I loaded the wrong one, tracker pin tool, and it does the same thing. So I have to, uh, input the tracker node that I want to reference. Uh, sometimes it gets stuck, so you want to set the, uh, you want to hit the reset offset, and you would have the same exact result as I was showing you before. And as you can see, we have the same, the same exact result with, with less clicks, which I love. And I do also have access to all the offsets in here. And uh, yeah. What I can also do with the same uh, node is, for example, let me remove this. I can uh, stabilize my footage by simply clicking Stabilize. And this would be the screen of the this one. Uh, the screen uh, would be here. And let's say that, uh, you know, I have to do some 
paint out, maybe some markers, maybe something like that, I don't know. And what I can do, for example, to demonstrate that is to draw something in here. Let's say this is our uh, paint out and I can copy the tracker tool and do the same thing and set to match move and I'm back in business as you can see. So um, this alone is super useful to me uh, at least because I don't have to make copies after copies of the tracker node and on top of that I forgot to mention that in the uh, stabilize mode you can by changing the clipping mode to none you can keep the data in the domain of definition which could sound crazy but sometimes when comping is super useful so let me show you one more thing with the tracker pin tool let's say for example that i want to that i want to add a mat control and with that match control, I want to dispel the image. And as you can see, what happens is the is that everything that has a shade of green is going to change color in the image. And that is something that I want. I don't want to happen. I want to restrict the area of the spill to the screen only. And what I would do normally is to add probably a polygon node and draw a mask around the screen so that that is happening only in that area, the, the spinning I mean. But that would mean that I would have either to animate that or to link that to the tracker somehow. So the tracker pin uh, tool makes that super easy. And let me show you how with a background node set as the input of my foreground. And let me use this same background uh, right, so here, let me show you. See, now what happens is that this is, is squashed in because uh, these are the points of the trackers. And what I would have to do to solve these uh, in Mocha would be to go uh, and change the surface area to the... Uh, edge frames and so I I added that same functionality into the tracker pin tool and you can do this at whatever frame you are, you, you're, you are so it basically acts as a reference frame you can extend to frame and that means that the polygon now is that is at the correct position and now I can use that one in the tracker pin tool and not there but here as a mask and that would be successfully uh, dispelled only on that portion of the image all right so let me show you what i what i have done in this comp just for the sake of it and i have my track a pin tool with this image here as an input and, and I'm doing what I've shown you before to the spill with the polygon and I'm using a delta here to pull a very very quick mat and here's the result okay so let's uh, go back to this here and let me remove this checkerboard and let me instead stabilize the image at let's do this at this frame and all right so let me add another macro that i created which is called pixel analyzer so what the pixel analyzer do is telling you in this box here, quick uh, to to be seen, if there's any uh, kind of negative number here in the dark areas, and if you have overbrights, yeah, you can uh, turn the overlay on and off, 
because you can use this pixel analyzer for more than only uh, analyzing your image and it's basically linked to a to a probe at this reference frame i want to add a time stretcher and let me add a paint node because what i want to do is to super quickly paint out this bolt here let's say that this is this is the task in in my in my comp i have to remove that bolt and i can either let's do this i can now copy this tracker tool and much move and also i would i would like to have a only the patch back using a, again a brightness contrast and a let's use an ellipse mask uh, let's go right here let me multiply by the mask and let me soften the edge a little bit and let's see what the, what it what it looks like let me merge that one on top and this is what happens as you can see the patch stays in place but is not following the flickering of the lights I mean I could uh, I could have not frame old this in this specific example but it did that so that I could show you my other my other tool which is called color matcher and the way it works is super easy so you want to be at the reference frame which is 1018 and then you want to have the pixel analyzer to look at this at the area where the bolt was so maybe something like you know something like this even less i think something like this so you know that we have these values in here and we have maximum which is the brightest pixels average which is the average pixel values and minimum which is the lowest pixel values and then in our color matcher we want the destination color to be connected to the average of the pixel analyzer and then i want to do that for the red the green and the blue of the tool here all right and now at the reference frame which is 1018 i want to set the destination to source i have to do it here where it's stabilized otherwise it's taking information from the wrong spot and as you can see now the flickering is connected to the color matcher and you basically don't have to do anything else it's automatically matching the colors super easy super quick well i think this wraps it up hopefully those tools are going to be useful to you thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one bye bye